I want to do demonstration of the bouncing ball. These are color tubes that have just a mixed bunch of colors and I wrapped one color around it and another color around that. These shapes, these tube shapes that are the balls I'm going to animate, um, I work with my hands to make thinner and thinner. I don't know if you can tell. I'm squeezing it a little bit each time, trying to keep the shape and trying to repair or fix any of the bumps or cracks that come out of that shape as I go through it. I'll then roll it on the table and then try to pull just a little bit more out each time. So this is sort of hand extrusion on clay. I'm trying to keep what's inside from getting too weird and too distorted by doing it just a little bit each time, by putting a bit of pressure and a bit of pull in all the directions so I sort of feel the shape and then as, it, as I see parts rip from the clay I'll try to repair them and keep it a consistent tube. That way I get from a larger tube to a smaller tube and an even smaller tube and even smaller. But all of these shapes were even larger than this when I began and that way I can get a lot of material to work with from a very small beginning. So these are going to be uh, bouncing balls. Now a bouncing ball um, it Ultimately, you could think of a bouncing ball as sort of like uh, here. This would be sort of a bouncing ball in your mind, going hop from one position to the next. Um, you might want to keep the amount of distortion that's implied here. In this moment, there's going to be a huge amount of ovalness, and that might actually be what you want, where you, you want it to look like this. It starts off looking, you know, in, well, it doesn't even look like a ball at the very beginning. It starts off very strange. And then it jumps up, and then it becomes a circle shape at the top, and then it jumps back down. So I'm going to assume that we don't want that, that we want to pre-distort it so it doesn't have that odd behavior here at the bottom. It's going to not look like a ball at all. So you really have to work um, your logical brain to figure out a pre-distorted shape that um, allows the ball to be a ball when it's hitting the ground. It's still a ball shape. So it would look a lot more like this. As you can see I'm making a uh, much more of a sort of Arch of St. Louis or something where it's uh, thinner at the sides and then becomes, as it reaches the arc at the middle, it's more slow. Now, one thing to do is to make sure that it really retains a circular shape, and so for that reason I'm sort of going to pinch the sides in, because that's often where it becomes less circular. So it looks sort of like a football here, but when you cut it, at this moment, it won't. It will look more closer to what a circle looks like. I would probably go even as far as to straighten them out. That'll make it a little more clean. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the side. This is what it'll look like from the front. I'm going to be cutting it from the front, trying to get a ball shape out of the first ball. So let's see if, what I've accomplished. All right, well, that's the ball hitting the ground. As you can see, once it lifts up and off, and we're going to need a little support clay underneath to make all that happen. That's pretty close. That'll be close to the circle shape I was intending to get. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more just to show you um, how the ball bounces twice. Um, again, I'm trying to pre-distort it toward the edges. And as it reaches the top of the arc of its flight, it becomes more purely circular. And so I can be a little more gentle since it's not moving 
up or down, it's just sort of staying in one spot, the, the less it's moving, then the more just like an ordinary circle it can become. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is this contact point between the two. I think that uh, you might, you know, ultimately you're going to want to cut both of them off and make a contact moment where the ball, one ball reaches up with the next, and this is the bounce point on the floor. So this is why I wanted to make two ball bounces so you could actually see that. Um, this of course will be angled this direction, so um, what I would ultimately want to do is put a little um, support clay on it. Now support clay can be white. Yeah, in this case, let's make it white. Since we're on a white background, the, probably the least obnoxious color is is white. Um, I'm going to support it. I'm going to show you from the side. I'm going to support it more like this. This allows... The reason I do this is that um, it allows the ball to take flight going this direction, cut, cut, cut. At this point, at some point, it's, it's, it's uh, really off its um, axis. And now here I'm going to sculpt something that's a little better right now. You can see that it, 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 what you're looking for is the point at which it hits the ground and stops supporting, which would be about right here. At that point, it's on its own. It's free, it's free floating, and it's now being supported by the back, the back of the column, not by the front. So I'm going to improve this just a little bit. Okay. So it's maybe not super pretty, but it will get the it'll get the point across of the bouncing ball. If I were really truly to finish it, I would probably I'd need to do another support column on the back of this ball because it's going to have the same problem once it rises up. The second bounce will need um, all the help it can get to stay afloat without falling over. So let's go ahead and add one here. Um, again, that the idea is to get it so far into the air that it's able to support itself off this back column. Of course, there's nothing back here except another bounce, probably, or another ball. In this case, let's have the ball actually not bounce any farther, but come to a stop. And what's beautiful about that is that that's probably how you do it. So this would be a ball at rest going nowhere. And this is a ball at rest at the beginning jumping up. Now, this wouldn't work as easily. The only, the only reason this works is this is a very abstract pattern in the center. So people, the ability to tell what's really going on in the center might, you know, somewhat obscures the fact that there's a splice or a jump here. If I were to actually make it a very clear, like a brand or a logo on that ball, I'd have to spend a lot more time making the logo itself 